Hello there once again and welcome back to this course in ENSC 106 and right now we are going to discuss the um, flexural stresses for non-homogeneous beams but before that I'd like to um, to make a correction about the term that I used in my previous video about the prismatic beams okay prismatic beams I should have said um, non-prismatic because uh, prismatic is because prismatic means that you have a constant cross section or a uniform cross section all throughout and for non prismatic that's uh, that that's what i was referring to in the um, previous video right so sorry about that but in our lecture handouts it's uh, it's actually non prismatic okay so now let's move on to to our next topic which is the non-homogeneous beams okay and when we say non-homogeneous um, it just simply means that it's not um, it's something like it's a mix of um, in our case in terms of materials so we have more than one more than one material in the cross-section and we have discussed this actually um we did we also did computations um and discussions of these non homogeneous members in torsion and members in actual loadings and so I think it's really necessary to to also include this topic here in in our discussion. Okay, so for non-homogeneous beams, like for example, we have a wood, right? And or let me draw it in this in this view. And let's say we need to to increase we need to increase the the flexural stiffness or flexural strength of the beam, but we are limited to this height. Okay, so let's say we this is a wood. right this is a wood so one way to increase is actually to increase or to change the the modulus of um, modulus of elasticity but um, what if we just want um, one material or um, rather we can't I mean we, we can't change this or we can't modify this this beam it's there but um, we just need to to increase the strength and we have this given limitations for example the, um, the depth now another another way to increase the strength is through the depth right because the more area that's away from the from the neutral axis you get a you get uh, you get a stronger section now if I include a woody right here then what if if I include a wood and it's not yet uh, and it's not it's still not enough I mean the strength that we want is not it's not achieved yet okay so since we have this limited uh, limited space right here so one way is actually to to incorporate another another material with um, with a higher modulus of elasticity and uh, let's say we we include a steel right here okay so in that way if this is bonded together like uh, they act as one then that means that we get a stronger section okay so that's one of the application for these non-homogeneous um, beams and there's still many others like um, one best example is the reinforced concrete beam right so for reinforced concrete beam it's a concrete uh, the, the section comprises of concrete and and steel reinforcements Okay, and the reason why we we introduce steel reinforcement in the section is simply because concrete concrete is weak in tension in tension but uh, strong in compression strong in compression so what this means is that if we have this um, we have this length right here of the beam and we cut a section and right, so I'm looking at the side view 
and recall that the stress distribution is something like this um, all right so we have a stress distribution something like this if we have this one so right here we have a compressive stress right compressive stress and below here below the the neutral axis uh, we are experiencing I mean the beam is experiencing tension tensile stresses so actually concrete concrete strength is let's say we get a 20 megapascals concrete or 21 megapascals and the strength and tension is just 10 percent right so that means we get a really really low um, strength or capacity for tension and we have uh, we, um, and for flexural members we have this um, we have this compressive stress on, uh, on top or in one uh, on one side and we have a tensile stresses on, on the other side so here in the tension region since concrete is weak then it's going to, to crack so that's why um, the reason why we reinforce the the concrete is just simply so that this steel will carry the the tensile stresses okay so that so that is why this is called reinforced concrete beam however um there are many many reasons uh there are, i mean there are still other reasons why why other members are reinforced i mean why other concrete members are reinforced like for example the columns although columns are are primarily um carrying loads in axial and let's say we have a compression compression loads right here although concrete is just already strong if we add steel reinforcements then it actually adds strength okay so we'll discuss i mean the the topic on reinforced concrete is uh, or we will discuss that in our course in ABE 161. Okay, so that's all for now for the introduction about non-homogeneous uh, beams. And right now we are going to, to discuss the working equations. Okay, so how do we analyze if we have a homogeneous, I mean if we have a non-homogeneous beams. Okay, so recall that we have this Fletcher formula that MC over I or MY over I. Right, so here's our basic flexor formula but this is only for a homogeneous beam or or one material but for us if we have two materials let's say we have a we have a material one right here this is our material one and this is our material two and let's say this is less stiff less stiff and then right here let's say this is stiffer material this is the the beam cross section and right here there's going to be a centroid and it's not really um, exactly at the mid span but uh, somewhere then in terms of the stresses we, uh, we know that flexural stress produces compression on one side right and um, tension on the other side now because we have this material right here so the stress distribution would be something like this okay so that's for stiffer material uh, which just means that if it's a stiff material then you need more force in order to um, deform it and for this less stiff material then that's going to be something like this okay so there's actually changes in the in the stress distribution because of course the other material has a different value for the modulus of uh, rigidity and probably other factors but for the strain they just um, I mean the strain distribution is just linear because the assumption is that they are or the 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 two materials act as one okay 
act as one section okay so that's why the the strain distribution is just uh, linear okay so going back to this flexural stress equation so how do we work if we have um, or how do we work out if we have we have non-homogeneous beams then basically um, we can solve for the stress let's say this first stress so Sigma 1 of the I mean of the first material is just simply MC or MY divided by EI bar all over E sub 1 okay and to compute for the flexural stress of the right here that's going to be sigma 2 simply m all over c of course that should be i think this should be c1 and then this one should be c2 because uh, what that means right here is uh that's the distance i guess from the neutral axis to this and for c2 it's gonna be this one okay so it has a different value for the uh, c1 and c2 and right here in the, the denominator this is the same ei bar all over e1 okay now my question is what is this ei bar so the ei bar this is what we call the weighted uh, weighted flexural rigidity okay which is just ei is just e1 plus i uh, sorry e1 times i1 plus the modulus of rigidity of material 2 times i sub 2 okay so if i write this in terms of ei bar divided by e sub 1 that's the modulus of rigidity of material 1 then uh, you would notice that uh, the unit the units in the denominator would be the units of of the modulus of oh sorry this is the moment of inertia okay another equation that we will be using or that we need is the how to locate the neutral axis and we can locate the neutral axis if we use this equation e1 y bar 1 so since we are using y here think anyway this one refers to the maximum y let's just leave it like that okay times the area one okay plus this one e sub 2 times y bar sub 2 times a2 is equal to 0 okay so how do we um, you might ask how do we find this I mean the neutral axis from this y bar Okay, so we will relate this y bar because this y bar is simply the distance from the neutral axis of the uh, of the overall section to the centroid of um, of one material. Okay, and this one is the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of the other material. Okay, so from that we can obtain the the location of the neutral axis. Okay, so the next equation that we need is let's write here the moment curvature equation so this is something like the force deformation uh, relationship in actual loadings so instead of force we're using moment right so moment curvature relations and this is m and instead of um I mean here in the in the numerator we are using the weighted flexural rigidity so e i bar divided by the um, the radius of curvature okay so i guess um we'll we'll discuss we'll discuss um actually we are going to do one sample problem and um but before that there are actually two methods for for solving this and that uh, that method uh, methods would be okay so the, the first one would be the the rec method and the other one would be the transform method okay so for the the rec method uh, that's that's just what we 
we discussed earlier, right? And it's just simply applying the Fletcher formula, except that we need to have uh, to have a modifications uh, so that we can we can accommodate the um, we can accommodate the fact that there's different properties between these two materials. Okay, so for the sample problem, um, here's our sample problem. Um, this one's taken from the textbook by Craig, Mechanics of Materials, and this is sample 6.7 at page 377. And we are going to use the, the REC method. Now, it says here, a non-homogeneous beam, having the dimensions shown, is constructed by gluing a thin aluminum plate to the top side of a square beam. So here's our aluminum plate and here's our wood beam. The dimension is 100 by 100 and the thickness of the aluminum is 10 millimeters. And right here we have the modulus of um, modulus of elasticity of the aluminum which is 70 gigapascals and the modulus of elasticity of wood is 12 gigapascals. Now determine the maximum flexural stress in the aluminum and the okay, maximum flexural stress in the aluminum and the maximum flexural stress in the wood when a moment m is equal to three kn. Um, I mean three kilonewton meter is applied. Okay, so uh, the first one is to we need to solve first for the location of the of the neutral axis. So solve for the location of the neutral axis. Okay, so I have to redraw this um, a little bit bigger. And right here, the centroid of this wood would be at the midpoint, at its midpoint, and the center, uh, or uh, or the centroid of this, of this aluminum, uh, aluminum would also be at, at its centroid. Okay, so now let's um, let's specify the distance. And somewhere right here, of course, there's going to be. Uh, this will be our distance, right? Or our centroid, or overall centroid, if we consider the these composite sections. Okay, so let's say here's our neutral axis, and we don't know that. And that's what we are going to find. So we know that the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of, um, let's say, of the wood, is going to be y bar sub two, right? And the distance from the neutral axis to the to the centroid of the aluminum that's uh, let's label that as y bar sub one. Okay, now what's what's the the distance from from the base from the base to the centroid? Since this is one hundred, then this will be fifty, right? And What's the distance from the top top face to the centroid? If if the thickness is ten, then ten divided by two that's gonna be five. Right? Okay, so another one is what's gonna be the distance from from the centroid to the top face? So if this is fifty plus so fifty and from the centroid to right here that's fifty plus 10 that's going to be 60 right so another one would be what's going to be the distance from the topmost surface to the neutral axis that's going to be our c sub 1 okay and right here what's the distance that's going to be uh, c sub 2 okay so since we know the equation, um, I mean we have the equation about for finding the neutral axis. We just need to um, to express this y, 
y1 uh, y bar sub 1 and y2 uh, bar we, we we just need to express this in terms of um, of this only because if we express this into unknowns then um, we will not get anything right so that's why we just need to express this y sub 2 and y sub 1 in terms of c1 okay so what's the what is y sub 1 in terms of c1 so that's just y1 sub bar is equal to c1 right c1 that's the total length minus 5 c1 again c1 minus 5 is equal to y sub 1 bar okay and for y sub 2 for y sub 2 what is y sub 2 in terms of c1 okay so y sub 2 is 60 minus c1 however based from this reference point this um this y sub 2 should be uh should be negative okay so let's write it here negative y sub 2 bar is equal to 60 minus c1 or if we use uh if we multiply both sides by negative this will be c1 minus 60. okay so here's gonna be our um working equation now solving for for the location of the neutral axis we'll use this equation um, plus these e times y times a of the second material so this one is 70 gigapascals and take note we have this gigapascals and our area and dimensions is in mm so i think we need to convert this to to megapascals so that would be uh, 70,000 right uh, that's megapascals times what is y1 sub bar it's c1 minus 5 c1 minus 5 times what is the area so the area is just 10 times 1000 that's the area of the aluminum so that's 1000 mm squared right plus okay plus uh, f for the wood we have 12,000 and the y bar is c1 minus 60 is equal to 10,000 because that's 100 my uh, 100 times 100 is equal to zero okay so we have on equation one unknown then we can solve for c1 and c1 is equal to 39.74 mm okay so solving now for c2 therefore c2 is equal to so from this graph since we have total length of um, this is 110 so 110 minus c1 that's gonna be uh, sorry 110 minus c1 that's gonna be our c2 so 110 minus 39.74 this is 70.26 mm okay okay so now let's solve for uh, Okay, solving now for y1 bar and y2 bar okay so y1 bar is just c1 minus 5 right so what you get here if, if it's answers to values what you get is 34.74 and for y2 bar this is c1 minus 60 and if it's answers to value what you get is is negative um, this is negative 20.26 um, Okay, so uh, Drawing redrawing now the section Okay, redrawing uh, redrawing now the section We have this so Right here and then right here and here's our neutral axis so this is y1 bar right y1 bar which is equal to 34 34.74 and from the neutral axis to this centroid of the second material this is negative 20.26 uh, so this is our y sub 2 bar okay and the distance 
from the uh, from the centroid or from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber then that's going to be C1 39.724 and this one will be uh, 70 point 26 and all dimensions are in mm okay so now uh, we have this distances we'll now solve for I think this is 3 so 4 is solving now for I total Okay, and recall that I total is just simply the moment of inertia of 1 plus the moment of inertia of 2. Now, let's solve for the moment of inertia of 1, which is 1 over 12 bh cube, right? That's at the centroid, but since we are rotating that not in the centroid, but rather at some distance, then that's um, then we need to apply the, the, um, the parallel axis theorem. And if you substitute all the equations, uh, I mean the values, what you get right here is 1.215 times 10 to the negative 6. But this one is in terms of uh, meter to the fourth. Okay, I changed the unit to meter to the fourth because when we're dealing with moments um, or uh, I think it's it's also fine if we just use the millimeter because after all we are solving for stress so i think let's use the millimeter value so this is just 1.215 uh, okay let me recompute this okay times this is times 10 to the it should be positive 6 right here and um, this is mm to the fourth right so not this one okay, so here's our i sub one and for our i sub two uh, we still use the same equation but the values are are different plus the area times y sub two bar squared and what you get here is 12.438 times 10 to the six and this is still in mm to the fourth so 12 plus 1.2 that's gonna be Okay, let's write therefore the i total is equal to 13.65 times 10 to the 6 mm to the fourth okay so that's it and the next step is to calculate so we still need to calculate the weighted uh, flexural rigidity and this is EI bar okay and recall that the equation of EI bars is simply the sum of the products of E and I and this is what is E so E is okay so for E this one for this E E1 and I1 let's let's just write in terms of megapascals so this will be 70,000 that's Newton per millimeter squared and this one should also be in millimeter uh, this is 1.215 times 10 to the 6 right okay plus the EI of the second material which is 12,000 times 12.438 times 10 to the 6 so this is equal to um, we can just write 2.343 times 10 to the 11 uh, the unit would be Newton per um, sorry not not per because this is Newton per meter squared and this is meter to the fourth so this should be Newton millimeter squared uh, that's point or if we divide by one by 1000 squared that would be 234 with 6 Newton squared okay so now we have the the ingredients uh, the values for the moment of inertia and other parameters so we can now solve for okay we can now solve for the for the flexural stresses 
Okay, so Sigma 1 max. So that's the outermost fiber that's um, that would be or let me withdraw the section it should be okay so let's say here's our stress distribution and right here is is our neutral axis okay. and for the second material that would be something like this okay so here's our stress distribution okay so sigma 1 sigma 1 max this is uh, this distance right here that's c1 and right here is c sub 2 so sigma sigma 1 max is just equal to um, its compression so that's negative m um, negative m y or negative c1 all over ei all over e sub 1 okay so if we substitute all the values what you get is a value of negative 35.6 megapascals okay so this one is 35.6 megapascals and this is negative because it's compression okay so we don't need to put the negative if we have this direction right here okay now for the sigma max of the second material that's going to be from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber uh, it will be my uh, or mc sub 2 all over e i bar all over the modulus of elasticity of the second material so you should substitute all, substitute all the values what you get is 10.8 megapascals okay so here's our answer so it's the direct method um, basically some small tweak in the in the equations just to accommodate the different properties of the two materials all right so that's all and in uh, in the next video we'll do the um, other method